Good morning. Welcome to worship on the second Sunday of the Advent season as we continue to prepare our hearts to meet our Savior again, just as we remember how the world met him when he was first born in Bethlehem. Today our service focuses on the preparation that God made for the people by sending John the Baptist to preach a message of repentance showing them the need for a Savior, which was followed by the Holy Spirit working in their hearts to bring them that comfort of forgiveness. We welcome those of you who are also able to join us online this morning. We pray that God will bless us all as we worship together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Prince of Peace, who takes away the sin of the world, be with you. And also with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God has blessed us with his love, but we have often responded with disrespect, disobedience, and disdain for our God. Let us confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty and merciful Father, I confess to you that I have not always loved you with all my heart. I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. In what I have done and what I have left undone, I have not loved my brothers and sisters as myself. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. I am truly sorry for my sins. I repent of them and beg for your mercy, O Lord. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, who came into the world to save us. Cleanse me from my sins, release me from my guilt, grant me your Holy Spirit, so that I may amend my sinful life. The Almighty God has been merciful to us and has sent his Son to die for all. For his sake he forgives us our sins and calls us from darkness to his marvelous light. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we light two Advent candles remembering Jesus who came in history. He came into a world of sin and death. 
We remember Jesus, who came as the promised Messiah. John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord. We hear his call to repent. We light two Advent candles as a sign of our repentance and desire for renewal. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Through your word and spirit, may our souls be blessed. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way for your only Son. By his coming, give us strength in our conflicts and shed light on our path through the darkness of this world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture lesson is recorded by the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, the first 10 verses. For the most part, the book of Isaiah is a book of God's anger against an unrepentant people. But the love of God continues to shine throughout that book in various chapters in which he reminds them of the promise he made to them and his faithfulness to fulfill it. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples, the nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. This is God's word. We join together in reading the, the verses of Psalm 130 today. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. Our second lesson is recorded in Paul's letter he wrote to the Roman Christians, chapter 15, verses 4 through 13. Rome was a congregation made up of displaced Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians, and in these words, Paul reminds us that all are called to believe in Jesus. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth to confirm the promises made to the patriarchs 
so that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing hymns to your name. Again, it says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and sing praises to him, all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is God's word. Our verse of the day comes from Luke chapter 3, verses 4 and 6. Hallelujah. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make, make straight paths for him. All mankind will see God's salvation. Hallelujah. Please stand for our gospel reading. The Holy Gospel was recorded by Matthew in chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Serves as our sermon text for this morning as well. In it, we see John the Baptist preaching his message of repentance and salvation. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This is God's word. We respond with the hymn verse. our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. I invite our children to come forward for a children's message. some things that you really, really, really like to do? Yes. What are some of the things you really like to do? Yeah. Play. Play with toys and play uh, with your friends? Play at the house. Play at the house? Yeah. yeah. What do you like to do? Do science. You like to do science? Uh, How about you? Eat. You like to eat? <laughs> uh, I like to play Legos. You like to play Legos? I like to do arts and crafts. Arts and crafts. I like to do a lot of those things too. How do you know if it's okay to do those things or not? Do you get in trouble when you do those things? No. So it's okay to do them? Could we play Legos right here today? No. No, no not in church? We go to only in there. Only in there, okay. And only in Sunday school. Only in Sunday school. No. Well, there are times when we want to do things, but other people decide whether we get to do them or not. Maybe you say, Mom, can we do a science project? And she says, not right now. Right? What if you said, Jesus, can I come live with you one day? And he said, I don't think so. You think he'll say that to you? No. no. Are you sure? How do you know Jesus is going to let you come live with him one day? In heaven. In heaven. What did he do to prove to you that he loved you so much? He died where? On the cross. On the cross, yeah. Do you think that was painful? No. Scary? But he still did it? So do you think now when you come to him on judgment day and say, can I come live with you? He's going to say No. God promised to send Jesus, and we celebrate Christmas. What happened at Christmas? He was born. Jesus was born, so God sent him to go to the cross. And because God did that, we know that when Jesus comes back again, he's not going to push us away. He's going to let us come live with him in heaven. Does that make us happy? Yeah. Yes. We get to do all kinds of fun stuff, and we never have to quit. And all because Jesus came to the earth to save us from our sins. And that's why we have our church decorated, and you probably have homes decorated, and there's going to be presents and cookies and family come visit, because we're so happy that Jesus was born. Can we say a prayer to show him how happy we are? You guys can repeat after me today. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus thank you for coming. To be our Savior. Come back again. To take me. To live with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming. We do have children's church today if you want to go with Miss Michelle. And we will continue with our hymn of the day.
God's grace and his mercy and his peace are yours, and you can be assured of that because he sent his Son to be your Savior. Amen. The word of God for us to consider is the gospel lesson from John chapter 3, where we heard, In those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is God's word. In the name of our Savior, who has brought God's kingdom near to us by his sacrifice on the cross. Parents have seen it happen many times. Their children are outside playing and they do something that they shouldn't. And so the parent will approach the child and tell them to go and say you're sorry. And at first the child may just mumble a little, I'm sorry. And mom or dad has to say, well, now say it again and say it this time like you mean it. And maybe the child puts a little more effort into it, but it's not quite satisfactory yet. And you have to continue to urge and encourage and teach children how to truly apologize so that there's meaning to the words that they say. Well, that doesn't just happen with children. It happens to all of us, too. Many times as we look at God's law and we compare it to our lives, we see the failures that have taken place. And maybe at night when we lay down, we mumble a quick, I'm sorry for the sins I've committed. And our heavenly parent might have to say, well then say it like you mean it. So we have to learn how to repent, how to apologize to God in a way that comes not just from our mouth, but from our heart. The words of our text from Matthew chapter 3, words spoken by John the Baptist, help us to learn how to repent from the heart, how to really mean what we say. And so as we look at these words, our Lord is going to fill us with the Holy Spirit so that we can repent from the heart a heart that truly recognizes our sins and a heart that truly recognizes our Savior. Our text for today began, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Might have been one of the shortest sermons ever on record, but it was a very good two-part law and gospel sermon. Part one, repent. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean to repent? Does it mean to lay down at night and quickly mumble, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins? Is that really repenting? The word that John used had a prefix which means to change, and it had a root word that meant heart, mindset, or attitude. Change your heart, change your mindset, change your attitude. It begins with looking at yourself and realizing there's something that isn't right, something that needs to be changed. John had been preaching a message of repentance. He had been pointing out the sins of the people, and now he called on them to, to change from those sins. And Matthew tells us that many of the people in Judea and around the Jordan River were very sorry for the sins they had committed. They had been touched by that law message of the one God sent to prepare them for their Savior. And they, they came to John in the desert. They, they walked those miles from their house into that hot, sandy desert. And finding John preaching there, they confessed their sins. And by confessing their sins, they didn't just mumble, and I'm sorry, but they spoke from the heart. Now, we live in a world that isn't always so eager to do that. We live in a world that doesn't want to, first, first of all, admit sinfulness. And so it often gives sin different names. It looks for ways to justify those sins. It looks for excuses to use for committing those sins. It compares itself with others to hold itself up a little bit higher than others who commit worse sins. And so rather than confessing those sins, we just bury them in our hearts where they continue to fester and to continue to, de to destroy our heart. And unless we truly repent and truly confess our sins, 
they will one day lead to our eternal death. John showed how serious sin is in people's hearts when he said, the ax is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Well, Pastor, when we started the service, we all joined together and we said we were sorry. In a couple of minutes before we come to the Lord's Supper and receive that individual assurance of forgiveness, we're going to say we're sorry again. We, we will confess our sins. We will repent. But again, just joining together and reading the words that were chosen and putting into your service folder this morning isn't true repentance. True repentance will take place when you look at yourselves through God's eyes. And when you do that, you will see that your heart is not the neat and tidy little home that you want prepared for Jesus. You will see those sins that are common to all people, and you will see some sins that are perhaps unique to you yourself. And when you look at your sins through God's eyes, you will see things that he abhors, things that disgust him, Things that will prevent you from living with him in heaven if they remain in your heart. And knowing that that's what God sees, you will fall on your knees and you will plead and beg for his mercy and ask him to forgive you. You will come into the desert confessing your sins from the heart, determined to change your lives and not live in that same pattern of sinfulness. When the people of Judea did that, and John heard their confession and could see that it was coming from their hearts, we we're told that they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Baptism is a command from God in which we take water and connect it to the promise of God, and we apply it to people to assure them that their sins are being forgiven. When John did that, he was showing faith in Jesus. He hadn't yet paid for those sins. And if Jesus never did die on a cross to pay for those sins, that water on their foreheads wouldn't have meant a thing, wouldn't have accomplished anything. But John and the people showed that they trusted the promises that had been given that Jesus would die for them. And so with their, their hearts now poured out to the Lord, they responded to his command and they came into the desert to be baptized, to show their faith and trust in that promise, to show that they were going to change their lives, they were going to turn from the sinfulness in which they had formerly lived. And as they came to John and were baptized, Jesus brought them his forgiveness. That is the response John wanted to see when he spoke part one of his sermon, repent. He wanted to see people who were in anguish over the sins they had committed, who freely admitted that they had sinned against God, and who then came to lay their sins at the throne of God's grace and mercy. And when John saw that, he eagerly went on with part two, the kingdom of heaven is near. John explained to the people how that could be. He said, I baptize with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John poured water on the foreheads of the people, but Jesus purified their hearts. John was a special messenger sent with a spe special message from God to point the people to the one who would activate the forgiveness. John could promise it, but he couldn't accomplish it. John could die for the people, but he would never forgive their sins with his death. Jesus would die for the people, and as the Holy Son of God, whose life is worth more than all the lives of all the people who will ever live on the earth put together, could sacrifice himself once for all of their sins. He would come with the Holy Spirit and that refining fire that would clear the impurities in the heart, that would allow God to look at the hearts of those people who repented and see a neat and tidy home waiting for him. And God would recognize them as his children when they came to him on Judgment Day. 
and he would invite them to come live with him forever. The kingdom of God is near, John said. What great news that was for the people. The law sermons that they had heard had brought them to their knees. They knew that they had been separated from God and would be eternally separated from God if he didn't do something about it. And so they looked eagerly for that Messiah that they had heard about for thousands of years. They looked for that, that root to spring up from the stump of Jesse, a, a descendant of King David who would free them from the sins they had committed. And then John the Baptist came, an unusual character, preaching out in the desert, wearing a camel's hair coat, eating bugs and wild honey. But the message he spoke was a message of power. It convicted them of their sinfulness, but it also brought such peace. Yes, you have separated yourself a long way from your God in heaven by your sins, but the kingdom of heaven is being brought near to you by his son Jesus. What you could never accomplish, bridging that gap between sinful mankind and a holy God, Jesus will accomplish in an instant when he dies on the cross to pay for your sins. And when the people heard that message, they were baptized, and they showed their love for Jesus, and they went away in peace. But there were others who came there not to confess their sins and be baptized, but to argue with John. We are Abraham's descendants. Don't tell us that we're separated from God. We have his blood running through our veins, and therefore God will love us no matter what we do. We are Wells Lutherans, and we go to church every Sunday, and God certainly will love us no matter what we do. If that's what we're going to bring to God on Judgment Day is the reason why he should let us come into heaven, we will be sorely disappointed. If God wants children of Abraham, people with blood running through their veins, he could turn stones into those people. That means nothing as far as his decision whether to let you live with him eternally or not. Is your heart the same as Father Abraham's heart? Just because you have your name on the books at Tree of Life Lutheran or any other Christian church doesn't mean that you're guaranteed a spot in heaven. If you do not believe in Jesus as your Savior, it matters not what you do throughout your life. So repent. The kingdom of heaven is near. It comes through Jesus and the sacrifice that he made. Jesus said, every good tree bears good fruit. Those who believe in me live according to my word. Those who believe in me follow me. Those who believe in me repent of the sins they commit and trust in my forgiveness. That's where we find the joy of this season. It's not in the cookies and baked goods, the relatives who come and visit, the gifts we get or give. It's in the one about whom this season is all about. It's about Jesus and the sacrifice he came to make for us. It's about being able to look for Jesus to come again, not with fear in our hearts and trepidation, knees shaking, but with great joy, knowing that he's going to swing wide the gates of heaven and, and invite us in. And we can be assured of that because God has led us to repent of our sins. No excuses, no rationalization, no justification of those things we've done against God's commands, but a simple confession of our sins, followed by a confession of our faith. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. And because the Holy Spirit has come into our hearts with that purif purifying fire of faith, we stand now as God's sons and daughters, led by him through this life to the gates of heaven, where he will take us to live forever. We are sinful people. We don't try to deny that. But we are repentant people. And repentance comes from the heart, motivated and enabled by the powerful gospel message of sins forgiven through Jesus Christ. Continuing to hear that message, 
and not letting other things push it out of our hearts or out of the season of Christmas, we will always stand in the peace and confidence of knowing that we are safe in Jesus' arms. Continuing to share that message with others will bring that same comfort and safety to them. And so just as God sent John to the people of Israel to point to the Savior and prepare the way for him, he is sending us too today to our friends and our neighbors and our relatives and other acquaintances to help them prepare to meet their Savior. And so we pray that God will continue to make us aware of our sins, a very necessary first part of John's sermon. We also pray that the message of the gospel will far overshadow the fears that we have and bring us that peace on earth that only Jesus could bring. God bless us as we prepare to meet our Savior just as people many years ago prepared to meet him for the first time. And God bless us with hearts that never fear but always rejoice in the news of a Savior. Amen. And that peace of God, which goes beyond our understanding, will guard and keep your hearts through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our offering for the Lord will now be gathered. Please stand for prayer. Almighty God, whose ears are always open to our prayers, hear now the prayers of your people. We thank you for your sure word of prophecy and its fulfillment in the word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Since by birth many of us are not part of your chosen people, Israel, we thank you that in your sure word of prophecy you have included us Gentiles. We glorify you, O Lord, for bringing forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, the branch, Jesus Christ. We thank you, O Lord, for anointing him with your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, and fill us with all joy and peace in believing. May we abound in hope through the power of your Holy Spirit, and empower us to serve and love you with pure hearts and to obey you with willing hands. We ask this in the name of Jesus, and in his name we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with private confession as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. In the name of our God, to whom all hearts are open, and from whom no secrets are hidden, amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, listen to my cry for mercy, and in your faithfulness come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and repentant sinner, confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart, I have not loved others as I should. I am distressed by the sins that trouble me and am deeply sorry for them. Jesus says to his people, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. His death paid for the guilt of your sins and the sins of the whole world. Do you believe this? Yes, I believe. Because of the promise of our Savior Jesus, I forgive you all your sins. Be assured that you are a dear child of God and an heir of eternal life. O oh Lord my God, I call to you for help and you answered me. I thank you for the love you have shown me in Jesus Christ my Savior. Through him you have rescued me from the guilt of my sin and given me the peace of forgiveness. Help me fight against temptation, correct whatever wrongs I can, and serve you and those around me with love and good works. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Go in peace, the Lord be with you. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. invited to come forward for the sacrament of the altar as directed by our ushers.
take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Also take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and sustain you in your faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. All of your sins are forgiven. is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which he gave unto death for the forgiveness of all of your sins take and eat this is the true body also of your Christ. Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ of our Lord which and he Savior gave unto Jesus death Christ. for the forgiveness the of all of your sins for forgiveness of all of your sins take and drink this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now may this true body and blood of our Savior strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, which he gave unto death for your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Savior Jesus, given unto death for your sins. Shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May this true body and blood of our Savior strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. Amen. of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which he gave unto death for your sins. Take eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take 
and take drink. This, this is, is the true blood of your Savior shed for your sins. And now may this, the true body and blood of our Savior, strengthen you, and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven, and you can depart in peace. Amen. Savior, given into death for your sins. And take drink. This is the true blood of your Savior shed for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Savior shed on the cross for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Savior, which he shed on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. May the true body and blood of our Savior now strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. <coughs> Please stand and we'll join together in giving thanks to God. special blessed blessing that you have shared with us in this sacred supper along with the bread and wine you have given us the body and blood of your son which was sacrificed to free us from the guilt of our sins accept our thanks and praise for this special blessing use it to strengthen our faith and guard us from evil guide us to give you glory now and forever amen the lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 May be seated as we close with the final hymn.
Good morning. Good morning. Just a couple of reminders for you. After our worship service, our fellowship snacks will be served, and then our children will be gathering to prepare to share the Christmas message with us in two weeks on Sunday, December 18th. Uh, adult Bible studies will be conducted at the same time, beginning at 11 o'clock. Next Sunday, we will have our congregational meeting. Uh, we'll also serve you a little pizza beforehand, so if you can plan to stay for a little bit longer next Sunday, we'd sure appreciate it. We will be setting our budget for the coming year, as well as filling the positions that are vacant on our leadership team for 2017. So your input is necessary and appreciated. We hope that you can join us. And then in two weeks, the children will be sharing the Christmas message with us. We'll use the next two Wednesday evenings to prepare our hearts for that message. So we have our Advent dinners beginning at 6 o'clock. And then we're going to have Advent devotions in the Fellowship Hall at 7 o'clock. We hope that you can all join us. Um, we're having comfort food, was it, this week? Italian, Italian this week. <laughs> all right. That is comforting to some. So bring a dish to share, and uh, then we'll have our devotion following our dinner. Are there any other announcements? Mr. Gerard? Uh, actually, two announcements, one question. That uh oh. Brought to me to you, Pastor. But uh, uh, men's Wings in the Word will be meeting again starting. In January. Um, I think January 2nd is a Monday, so it would be the 9th. Okay. So we're about a month out, but we will be meeting a week from tomorrow for a Christmas party. Announcement. So, actually, on behalf of Chris Johns, uh, we are looking for ushers. So, those who are not currently serving and would uh, like to uh, be in a position of service uh, for the church, we could use your help. Uh, we have some themes that are not being covered because of attrition. People who have left the area, so uh, we could use your help. And you know, it's, it's five themes, so at, at most can be once every fifth time. So. Uh, your name, or Chris Johns, there'll probably be an email sent out as well to respond to that. Uh, the other is, there are, um, we have a committee that's uh, been formed, and I'm probably speaking on behalf of somebody else here, but uh, that are doing every member visits. So uh, some of us are still trying to reach out to members of the congregation. We have a short survey of questions that we'd like to uh, run by you. Uh, we're trying to do this obviously face to face, so, um, uh, if you see an email, or you haven't checked your email, or if you get a phone call from one of us, uh, please give us your earliest possible date that we can get together and uh, go through that survey. Thank you. We hope to uh, put all of the information that we received together during the month of December, and then in early January have another uh, planning meeting with our committee. So thank you. Other announcements, Ms. Carlene? <laughs> I just wanted to tell you guys, for all of you that have known the twins since they were little and have either heard directly or figured out the challenges that they face, they have started a job at Bojangles and so just say thank you God because they, they've been handling it really, really well and so I'm really excited for them. And I knew you guys would be happy. Those are two very special young men in our lives, so we're happy for the good news. Happy for the good news. We don't see all that part. So um, a little bit of bad news. We didn't have a whole lot of interest generated in this year's Christmas for kids, so we're going to cancel that for this coming Saturday. I only had uh, five children sign up and had a few late volunteers uh, offer their services, but uh, a little too late now to put our program together. So. We'll talk about it again next year and see if there's more interest, but for this year, we're gonna put that on hold. We do have some refreshments and snacks. Got about a half hour before we begin our Bible class and our children's uh, worship practice. So God's blessings to all of you. Hope to see you again on Wednesday night and then next Sunday.